This is the new OM5 from OM Systems. Now this camera has been designed to be invisible, really. You're meant to take it with you everywhere. It's meant to be the camera that you take with you when you go hiking, when you go exploring. It's the story camera, right? Now, unfortunately, I got told that the day before we were meant to shoot this. So I couldn't, I couldn't muster up a trip to Wales or the Netherlands or somewhere like that. So instead, what I thought I'd do is I'd get James, who's behind the camera today, to do a bit of exploring of the places I love to shoot. So with the OM5 today, I'm gonna to show James some of my favorite local shooting locations. And they're not all rolling hills. Some of them are a little bit different. Inside of this camera, we have a 20.4 megapixel sensor. Now that is a micro four thirds sensor and it's a micro four thirds mount. So that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of the lenses. Now, obviously when people like this release cameras, you know, people like Olympus, Canon, Sony, they always release them with some of their lenses in mind. Now with this OM5, they've designed this, these to go with the sort of F4 series of lenses. But you can use whatever lenses you want. It balances very well with their F4 series. It's a really nice partnership. However, if you're going somewhere and you want the absolute best, then you can take their series of 2.8 Pro lenses. If you want something that's a lot more carry friendly. If you're going on a big hike, you're looking at heading on a plane, you can use some of their really small lenses. That's a great thing about Micro Four Thirds. There is just an enormous range and flexible range of things available to use, which is great. Now this camera also has a ton of features. James behind the camera today, what we're gonna do is I'm basically gonna tell him to pick a feature and then I'm gonna find a nice location to test that out. So James, what feature would you like me to try first? Or as we're at the top of a nice hill, how about we try that handheld high res? Yeah, I'm actually really excited for that. That was one of my favorite features when I first saw it on the EM1X. Um, and the handheld high res on this, you're getting 50 megapixels. If you stick it on a tripod, you'll get an 80. So I reckon here, I'll try the handheld at 50. And then maybe later we can have a play with that 80 megapixels. Yeah, looking forward to see the photo. This location is stunning. Now recently, this was all open filled, but I actually love that they fenced in the footpath down here. So I've used this a couple of times recently. It's just the most dramatic view. The further down the hill you get, you just obviously get lots of different perspectives. But for me today, I love that we've got a lot of movement in the sky. You've probably noticed it whilst we've been filming. We've got that annoying shade, sun, shade, sun that we can't actually make any good grading from, so apologies for that. Um, but the sky, we've got some interesting stuff going on. We've got some really cool light and dark areas in the landscape, and then we've got this sweeping fall off. So I think it's a really nice place to try out that handheld um, 50 megapixel shot, high res shot. Now, when you're doing high res, you need to be aware of how it works. So basically, sensor sits inside and it goes boop, 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 boop. It shoots some pictures, it stitches them all together. Now, it takes a very, very short amount of time to do that. But if there is excessive movement in the shot, then there will be blur and weirdness. So you need to take that into account. Now, there's a bit of wind here today. Is there excessive movement? I don't think so. Realistically, those trees are so far away, you're not gonna notice any movement in the leaves. It's not windy enough. And we're only doing the handheld shot, not the tripod shot. For that, I'd want things to be a little bit stiller. I'd probably be looking at architecture or something more like that. So in this shot, there's no water. We haven't got excessive movement. So I think we're absolutely fine to do a handheld 50 megapixel shot here. And I'm just gonna try and get a bit of everything. And I'm also gonna take a comparison shot as well. So you can see how it looks at 50 megapixels and you can see what that 20.4 megapixels looks like as well. Try and line it up exactly the same. I don't wanna use a tripod to line it up because obviously it's meant to be handheld. So get that shot, there we go. And then it just says busy and it's just stitching that together in camera. Some other cameras do this and you have to stitch it afterwards and I am lazy. So I quite like this, that it's just all stitched in camera. And that's it done. So now I can look. And yeah, there's, zooming in on that, there is a noticeable, big noticeable difference. So what is the next thing you wanna see? Well, I really like that live eye ND. I think that's a really neat feature. Like so that. maybe we go and find some water somewhere. Yeah, I can do that. I've got plenty of places. We are relatively near the coast, so I can make that happen. Brilliant, let's, let's go. go. Oh, 
we can't go anywhere with her. What are you doing? Sheep. Sheep, sheep. Tell you what, that was a rubbish shot of some sheep. <laughs> I thought that line was gonna be really nice, it's horrible. <laughs> This is one of my favourite locations to visit. Um, luckily, I live near Brighton, so I'm always near the sea. And there's loads of cool beaches near me, but I love it here. Uh, and the reason being is because of these incredible rock formations, which, because I'm an idiot and didn't check the tide times, you can't see. But uh, here's a photo I've taken at a completely different time on a totally different camera. So that's what it would have looked like, but we don't have that. But I'm gonna try the live ND anyway, because I'm dedicated to showing you guys what cameras can do. So we're gonna try the live ND on the sea, see how it looks. I've used this feature in other Olympus cameras, well, oh, OM system cameras. And it's always been fantastic. So I'm gonna use that now. We've got some lovely blue coming through the sea. So actually, I think it'll look quite pretty. And then we'll head out of here and see what James wants to test out next. James. Can I steal your tripod, please? Because mine's in the car. <laughs> this is a great time to use a fully articulating screen. We've got quite a big drop off of stones here and the sea's coming in a bit. So just to save me getting wet and the tripod and stuff and kit getting wet means I can just make use of this screen, which is quite nice. Now I've set the tripod up here. Uh, I'm just going to have a look and see what this shot's looking like. Let's see how this looks. So you just press the button. There we go. So that's done the live ND for us. And then we've got a little bit of movement in the sea there, but I think I can go one more. So I'm just going to go ND 16. See how it looks. Oh yeah, nice loads of movement in the sea and haven't had to use a single filter because the ND is in the camera. I'll tell you what, I'm getting a lovely shot of some people sitting underneath those nice safe cliffs. At least they, at least they never collapse. I was just trying to show James some of the cliffs here, but there's a lighthouse just over there and I've stuck on the 40 to 150. So I just wanted to see how it looked. Remember micro four thirds. So equivalent on a 35 mil, you're looking at 80 to 300. So it's a nice big range, just good zoom. Now standing here, pretty windy day. That is very far away, 300 mil. You can see the jitter loads. And as soon as I half click that shutter button, the IBIS really comes into play. Now the image stabilization in the EM1X uh, was incredible. And that was the first one I tested from Olympus where I was like, wow, this image stabilization is amazing. Now in this OM5, this one has six and a half stops of image stabilization built in. So already that's great. But if you use one of the, uh, the compatible IS lenses, then you can get it up to seven and a half stops. So that is so much. You're not really gonna need more than that. It means if you're using nice big zooms, maybe you've got a telephoto plus like a converter maybe, so it's really long, then it means you can shoot handheld more often because you're gonna have that extra stabilization of yourself. Obviously no good if your subject's moving. But also it means if the light is a little bit funky and you need to stop down your shutter a little bit, you can do that without having to worry too much, especially if you're shooting more wide angle. And especially if you're shooting, say in some interesting light, maybe at night or you're at a pub or something like that, like an event street photography, just allows you a little bit more, a little bit more freedom in the way that you shoot when you have that level of image stabilization built in. Right, what I haven't told James is I'm actually going to send him on a little bit of an expedition now, mainly because I parked the car in a place where I'm not 100% sure my parking ticket allows. So, nobody heard that if you're watching, people from National Trust. So, James, what I'm going to tell you to do now is follow this little path along and you'll know when you get to the bit. That's it, that's all the instruction you're getting. You'll know when you get to it. Not that one. Not that one. Be coming from right over there. Oh my god, he's behind. <gasps> there he is. 
Did you find it? Yes. Oh. Nice, isn't it? Oh. It's quite far away. <laughs> <laughs> Is it worth it? Yeah, definitely. I got some very good shots, I'm happy with it. So we are coming towards the end of our day. Where would you like to go next? We've got well, the 80 megapixel shot 80 to do. megapixel shot, so we should do something architecture-wise. Now, on the way here, there was a viaduct. Where's the viaduct? We should, I think we should go there. Was it massive? I think so. Okay, I know where you mean. I, yeah. can, I can take you there. Yeah, because that would be really good to test the, the 80 megapixels from here, because you are going to have to use it on a tripod. So for something like that, you want something that's not moving necessarily, something that's kind of grand. It's really good for like architecture or large landscape. So Viaduct would be quite nice. When we get I there, think. you will 100% recognise it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, you, you'll know it. Is it famous? Right It's then. very famous. Let's go. Let's go then. So, very bad news. Basically, the viaduct is having massive roadworks uh, on the outside of it, and then also the hole underneath is shut. So even if we could find somewhere else to stop, because there's like a little lay-by lay next to it, uh, we can't actually get to it anyway. So, um, because the light is so rubbish now, like it's gone really cloudy, it's not very nice, James is gonna head back now and I'm going to try out this 80 megapixel thing tomorrow. Um, I've got a couple of places in mind that I had as backup, so I'm gonna head to those, take the 80 megapixel shot, and just round out what I think of this camera, because actually, I've been, I've been quite impressed, and I think it does do what Olympus says that it should do, which is just, kind of just be on you. Just be invisible, right? You're just going along, you're just using it, you're not really thinking about it too much. Just photographing your day. And if you're heading out to do something because you want to enjoy it, not because you're going out for a photography day, it's very hard for me and James, we kind of automatically do that. But if you are going out because you, you know, you want to visit a local mountain or a railway or whatever it is that you like, I think this very much is the type of camera that you easily can take along with you. Now, personally, I wouldn't have something like the 40 to 150 on it for that type of shooting. I'd want something nice and small and compact, maybe a little 35 mil type prime. So maybe obviously something a little wider because micro four thirds. But that's how I think I'd shoot with it if it was mine. I think I'd want something nice and quick and small and then maybe a zoom lens to go with it. That would be, yeah, that's how I'd see using it, I think. But it is nice little piece, nice weight to it, feels sturdy. Um, it is dust and splash proof. Uh, I think it's an IP53 rating, which basically means it's very dust proof and it's splash, it, when I say splash proof, it basically means if you're in drizzle, you're okay. Um, if you are planning on taking this into a waterfall, you can have some issues. So that's kind of how you want to use it. If it's raining and you're going for a nice walk, you don't really have to worry, which is kind of what this is for, right? But yeah, I'm going to try out that 80 megapixel because I'm really interested to see just how it looks. I love testing that on these Olympus cameras. All in all, pretty impressed so far. I managed to find a beautiful church to try out the 80 megapixel tripod shot. It might have been pretty low light, but you still get a fantastic amount of detail. Just check out these comparison shots. This one is at normal resolution, and this one's using the 80 megapixel tripod shot. The MM5 is certainly a powerful tool in a small portable body that you can take with you without feeling like you're carrying a big heavy camera. With all the features we've shown in this review, plus the fact that you can shoot OM400, the OM system's log profile for flat video, it can take continuous images at 30 frames per second in RAW, and it has five axis IBIS with up to 7.5 stops when using compatible lenses, the OM5 definitely offers you a lot to explore with. To find out more, visit our website. The link's in the description, and a big thanks for watching.